Paul Simon, who is just one great lyricist and songwriter, on Graceland, Graceland, and Boss Gags at the Low Down on this Thursday, January 17th, which is National Hot Butter Drum Day. But you don't see that much here on Maui, do you? It's kind of a, you know, for cold days in Europe or the East Coast, maybe. <laughs> Although, you know, it was 68. 67, maybe up country, it got down to the 50s. It was cold for Maui, but I don't know if it's cold enough to bring out the national hot buttered rum. <laughs> uh, you could try, right? Uh, coming up here, we've got some music from the Hollies, that long cool woman in a black dress on the magic morning buzz. Electric prunes. I had too much to dream last night. And ELO with boy blue here. Um, oh, I have some good news to tell you. Ron Midag is going to be starting a show on Sunday. You know, we love all kinds of rock and roll. Our roots go deep in progressive rock for me because I started there way, way, way back when. Um, but uh, he'll be doing a show Sunday mornings from 7 to 11. And it's a Sunday buzz with um, deep album cuts. You know, the deep album cuts you haven't heard in a while. Plus, he's got some tasty live tracks. Um, Sunday Buzz is a great way to get your good music on on a Sunday morning on 107.5 here. Good going. Thank you, Ron. Coming up here, we've got some music from Foreigner Hot-Blooded on the Magic Morning Buzz. T-Rex and Jeepster. I love that one. I think T-Rex and Bang a Gong has to be my favorite, though, but great music. And also you two in there. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. You know, Monday's a holiday. Dr. Martin Luther King Celebration Day. And then we get into full forth looking ahead for Valentine's Day, right? And we're looking forward to it. Um, I want to thank Kyle Louis Flores for giving us a dozen roses. And Lee Bear is going to give us a basket, and we're going to have a, a dinner for two. It's a great way to celebrate. And don't forget, you can call Kyle Louis Flores early. In fact, it's a good idea, you know. Um, Valentine's Day is really busy, and you don't have to make it crazy. You can just call them, and they'll deliver the flowers. But, um, you know, there's only so many roses on Maui, right? <laughs> you don't want to be left out. You can call them uh, early at 877-3951. Um, they're great people. They've been in business for over 40 years. They're just really awesome people there. And they're right there on Dairy Road next to tomorrow, tomorrow's. Um, you know where that is? Right there, just above Akaku. Coming up here, we got Van Morrison and Wild Night on the Magic Morning Buzz. Hey, there's going to be a Fourth Friday happening tomorrow in Makawao, and it's going to be a great one. Pat Simmons Jr. Band's going to play at 6 o'clock on the main stage, and uh, there'll be a special uh, appearance by Travis French with a street fire performance called Maui and His Gift of Fire. And that'll be going on 7.15 to 7.30 on the main band, um, during the main band break. Plus, they're going to have Josh at Maui Hands, and um, they're going to be even having Pua hair piece making and all that good stuff. Hey, he just came in. Dave Mason, you're so impressive. You know, musicians usually never show up or come in late, and Dave came in early, early, early. Just amazingly awesome. I'm so impressed. Hi, Dave. How are you doing this morning? <laughs> good, thanks, Cindy. It's good to have you in here, playing DJ for a day. You and Alice Cooper, right? <laughs> and this, <laughs> but there's got some other musicians who've had some really good, good radio shows. You know, it's kind of a thing. You know, you get to a certain point and you get to talk about music, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Forget playing. We're gonna talk about music. Yeah, I don't need to talk about it. I'd rather play it, frankly. But that's well, see, okay. I'd rather play it too, but I can't. So well, what's you, the well, next? Well, thing? you get to talk about <laughs> it. I get to play it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a perfect combination. Well, we'll be talking to Dave here this morning on the Magic Morning Buzz coming up. The cars and bye bye love. Music from Jay Giles Band, Looking for a Love, and Chicago. Does anybody really know what time it is? With Dave Mason here is my co DJ. Good morning. Good morning, Dave. Okay, I have to ask you if you weren't a great musician, songwriter, singer, what would you be doing? What other secret part of it would you bring out if you weren't doing this whole huge thing with energy? Oh, well, originally I was, I was studying to go in the Royal Air Force. Not 
Really? That's what I really well, wanted to do. Well, they had great uniforms, didn't they? <laughs> and they were those beautiful. Every girl has a nice uniform. Yeah, and they were those beautiful planes, you know. That, I mean, there is a great history. I have to say it's a little more regal in Britain. Well, yes, yeah, so it probably appears that way, I suppose. It does appear that way. Did you have a relative? Did you have a father or other people that were in the uh, military in, in England? Well, my uh, my father was born in 1894. Uh-huh. And did so he serve in the World War I? So my father was in World War I. Did he, was he in World War I? Yeah. Oof. Yeah. That was a tough one when they were doing all that. He was that in awful. transport before they invented pneumatic tires. Wow. And my brother was driving tanks in North Africa in the Second World War. That was a nasty one, wasn't it, down in they North both Africa? Were. Yeah, they all So were. they fought two world wars, and so I grew up with that. Mm-hmm, yeah. I think there's a lot of people that don't understand the impact in England that you had. You were so much closer than we are here in America. Well, so not just England. I mean, I just... Europe. Um, I just think that there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of probably younger people that really have no clue mm-hmm. at all about right. what was fought for. No, I totally you know, agree. I mean, you know, instead of a rock band, you could be having an umpa band up there on stage playing. <laughs> wow. Did you ever learn to fly? I, I, ha- I have a bunch of hours, and I have 20 hours in helicopters, but I, I just kind of I stopped because I wasn't doing it full time and I don't and being a casual pilot is really it's a dangerous it's, thing. It's not like a car, you can't just pull over when something goes wrong. So I, I learned how I took a Lisa Plane Air Course. When I was in Santa Monica I probably did about oh, thirty hours solo and then I came in behind a jet and got too close. Uh, and as oh, I was the landing the air yeah. the jet float I spun out of control yeah. down the runway. Right. I landed about two feet wow. from the tower. And I actually got the plane back to its parking. I got out, my knees collapsed. Oh my and God, I, I, I bet. I, I, and that was the last time I flew. Oh, well, going, good for I you. I never think, got that far. <laughs> don't think I'm going to do this again. Yeah. Who did it? Was it Roger? No, Tom Petty. The coming down is the hardest part. I like to fly, but the coming down and the flying. Plane, it's a controlled crash, you know, is all <laughs> it is. <laughs> No, I'm not going there. Well, we know something about Dave we never knew before. (laughs) Coming up, we got music from a great, great, great guy. Bruce, born in the USA on the Magic Morning Buzz with Dave Mason. Genesis, I love that song, The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. And Joe Walsh, Genesis did a lot of interesting different things. They were very experimental for a while, weren't they? They Yeah, yeah. did, Did you know that Phil Collins is the second richest drummer in the world? I would assume he probably is. Lord knows he had enough hits. And number one, of course, Ringo. Ringo. Who can touch that, right? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if he'd be the richest, though. Phil Collins might be richer than him. No, Ringo, Ringo doesn't is. write. Yeah, but but still, that, that huge volume, right? Yeah, Love Ringo. Stuff, yeah. He's good. He's the yeah. luckiest drummer in the world. <laughs> he is the luck- luckiest. Did you ever get a chance to play with him? Oh, yeah, I knew all. Pretty much all those guys. I mean, I played on All Things Must Pass. So. Oh, well, that's a great song. That was a great No, I mean song. on the album. Yeah, no, that's a great album, All Things Must Pass. I played on that, and I sang on... Uh, it never came out, and I don't think I sang on a group with a group of people on uh, a version of Across the Universe. Oh, words And then I'd go flowing. down and hang out sometimes, uh, a few times while they were doing Cutting Sergeant Pepper. Was that was at, at, at was that at uh, the Penny Lane uh, e- EMI the, Studios? Was that a great place to record? Uh, it was just studio, big studio. Yeah. I mean, there was yeah. there weren't that many. Who was the best engineer you've ever worked with? Because people don't understand the importance of good engineer and a good producer. Uh, Glenn Johns, good engineer, is good engineer. I mean, there's a lot of them. Yeah. Um. um uh, Eddie Kramer was a good is good engineer. Um, uh, I mean, those are the people that I'm. Um, Al Schmidt. I don't know Al Schmidt. Bruce, Al Schmidt. Uh, well, Al did a lot of stuff, lots of things. Go back all the way to um, Nat King Cole, Frank Sinatra. Really? Wow. And he did. Uh, he was one of the engineers on Alone Together. People don't realize the importance of the engineering and the production and mixing and. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's really an important uh, part. 
Yeah. If you wanted to sound good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people don't know the work that goes into that, that amazing part of doing music, which is like so key. And, and it changes. It changes. It's like changing clothes or styles. There's fashions. The way they do it now is different than the way they were doing it. When it's much more simpler back when you were recording with traffic. Um, we try, well, our first out, yeah, our first album was on four tracks. Four tracks. Oh my! Can you imagine? Yeah. Oh my! I can't even imagine. You don't have a lot of options on four tracks. Uh, you, well, you do, but you have to keep, you know, you keep bouncing down, which means you lose audio quality. Wow, wow, that's amazing. Coming up, we've got music from Queen. Boy, did that come back! Right? Would you ever <laughs> have imagined? That we will rock you and we are the champions would be the song. Did you ever imagine when Queen was doing this that they would be able to have that huge, huge impact? And I guess part of it was they, they wanted to do the <laughs> the anthem kind of get to the crowd sound with this. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was part of their goal. Well, the NFL certainly helped with that. Sure did. <laughs> <laughs> we can all sing along to the song on the Magic Morning Buzz. Music from the Moody Blues, I'm just a singer in a rock and roll band. And um, you're going to be doing a blue cruise. The blue cruise, the blue cruise Justin, on February the 10th. With, Justin uh, Hayward. Uh, he, yes, he, uh, he is the Moody Blue. Well, you know, because the other, it was really sad. There was the death, was it last year or the year before? Um, one of the other Moody Blues singers I, died. I, 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 not, I don't know, to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, I was, see, I liked... I wasn't particularly a fan of the later Moody Blues. I liked Moody Blues when Denny Lane was in, was Denny the lead Lane, singer. Yeah. And the record Go Now. Yeah. Go, go now. now. Did a great version of Go I Now. I don't didn't even remember that. Go Now. That's you gotta right. go now. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, I haven't thought of that song in a long time. Yeah, he did a great go version now, of now. that. Yeah, yeah, that was a great song. But you know, they were the first to, to capture that kind of spiritual feeling and and the LSD experience. That was going on, right? <laughs> well, we were all doing that, that back that was, in the 60s. That was like, you know, that was going in the 60s. And, <laughs> and a, But one thing people don't realize, also, hash was really big. I went to London. Oh, hash? Sure, that's oh, all you can get. You didn't get God, you, I went there, you, and I couldn't. We didn't get that much in L.A. Nice. And I went to visit a friend in London, and a friend of hers came in with a van loaded at the bottom with the whole thing of hash she brought in from Morocco. Sure. And it's like, whoa! I mean, oh, yeah. that but that was going on there a lot, maybe even more well, than that's marijuana. What, well, there was no marijuana; it was hash. Yeah, hash Just, or keef. Yeah, and and then the LSD, of course, did that whole experience. It changed the Beatles, and the Moody Blues, and many many others. Right? Did Traffic get inspired by <laughs> some of the some of the songs? Are pretty psychedelic, I have to say. Yeah, but it was kind of the music too that uh, that was happening. And we were just, it was just an experiment, with or without it, it was just an experimental time. I mean, I was, you know, I was 18 years old, for God's sake. I, I didn't, you know, try yeah. anything. Did you, that was just out of high school, before college? Uh, I kind of left school when I was, I didn't go to college. Mm -hmm. uh, I left school at around 16. What town in, what part of England? London? No, no, no. I'm from the I'm from the heartland of England. I'm from Worcester. Oh, okay. Well, that's a very different experience than London. Then. Well, yeah. London is just another big city. Yeah, that's yeah, all. yeah. No, that's so, not England. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you think of what was happening there, and there was a lot. Happening I mean, it's like there. America. People yeah. think you know New York and L.A. is it. Right, but you were in a personally. Smaller... I you know prefer the the space in between. Yeah, L.A. and New York. Yeah, I agree. Well, and then there's Maui, the heartland. Well, you're, you're <laughs> you people are truly in the, you're in the middle of an ocean for God's sake. <laughs> this is the furthest island from any mainland on this 2, planet. Twenty five hundred miles. You know, you're in just, surrounded by water. You better hope the airlines don't shut down. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's true. We have, I think we have three days. <laughs> Three days supply. Uh, is that's it. That's about uh, it. Would be for up, gas and yeah. up in the hills of Bows and Arrows hunting those dogs. <laughs> well, there's enough it. people that do that. <laughs> Believe me, there are. <laughs> Coming up, we've got music from Guess Who, Dave Mason and Gretchen Rhodes doing yeah. from the brand new CD for ah, real. Cool. Only you know and I know. We got to listen to this. This is a great, great version. I think we're probably the first radio station to play this. Well, these are yeah. That's this is all live. Um, 
These are not studio recordings. And they're it's great. All, they're all live from a. They were actually cut, cut it a private. Uh, it was a private function. There was maybe a couple of hundred people there, but we. Wow. We recorded it and. and uh, and then I got it back in the studio and was listening to it, and I was like, wow, this actually sounds pretty damn good. <laughs> well, it does, and you, well, you know, I, I'm here with Dave Mason, and I have to say, you know, when you do, and a lot of people don't realize, it's not like you just come up with an idea for a CD and an album. You, you It takes so much to get from point A uh, to point Z. Um, in between, there's a lot that goes on, and we were just saying how many times you hear things you have to listen and listen and listen you know mm-hmm. and truthfully sometimes after the 50th time you can't hear it anymore so d- how do you take a step back and hear it objectively with objective ears before you put it out because it's you get so inundated you can't hear it cleanly. oh with the, with the song you mean yeah, or, yeah. And, when you're producing well, it i mean i may have you know you may, you may have written more thing more things you discarded than things that that you actually you some people work in different ways. Some people, you, you know, work in the studio and let something emerge out of that. Me, I have to. I'm more of a. Um, if I'm going in the studio, I'm, I have to have a song, pretty much. So you're because I'm very song orientated. Yeah, song driven. I'm song driven because in the bottom line, at the end, no matter what, whether it's digital or this or that and that, there's an old saying: it's the song. The song, the song, yeah, and a great song will last forever. Like like great music. That's I, I don't look at like old like the what they call old is. It, it, there are it's just, there are no old is. There's just either good stuff or there isn't good stuff. What, so music's what, what timeless. What makes it good? What makes a song rela- is it the relatability? Well, if I knew specifically what that was, I'd have a slew of. You know, and they, I'd be the I'd be the second richest writer. You know? They have I think they have an app for that, Dave. Uh, uh, but <laughs> but, but, other, <laughs> but otherwise, like it's a song, and and usually it's it's um can be triggered by anything. I mean, when I was younger, I, mean, I have to admit, when I was younger, I was probably a little more idealistic, um, as most young people uh, tend to be. As you get a little older, you get a little more defined in your things. So. Uh, you know my, but I always tried to specifically write towards a timeless theme, That's so a good that idea. it did not date the song. That's a, if, if musicians hear that advice. That is a very, very good. good and there suggestion. really are only just. I mean, as much as people want to talk about change and this changes and that changes, nothing changes. Although, people don't. Nothing changes about people. Change, all needs and, the great song. A change is going to come. It's a, that's a change. Well, a change that talks in about at, change and never got a change time. in attitude. But basic wants and needs and desires of people never change. Who did there that? are basic themes in life. I Shakespeare. Was born by a river. I mean, Shakespeare wrote the twelve sonnets, which were probably his attempt at the Greeks, who wrote the thirty-six pillars of wisdom, which are basically the basis for every plot for every that's ever been written. The hero's It's like story. the book of changes. There are yeah. only some, the, you know, the wrapping changes, the yeah. bow changes, and you can yeah. change your mind. But basic, you know, hunger, food, love, hate, all those things, human things, are constants. They don't change. Very good. So they're timeless. As is your music. And Thank only you. you know and I know and a lot of great songs that have definitely been picked Hopefully up. Hopefully I know better now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Coming up, we've got Crosby and Nash, Immigration Man. That hasn't changed. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot. Yes, I played on that, didn't I? Did you play on this? That's me playing guitar on it. I didn't know that. Yeah. Had no idea. Gosh, I'm learning so much from Dave Mason here on the Magic Morning Buzz. All right, that's Van Halen, Dan, Night Away, and uh, Rob Thomas from Santana. Yeah, I love um, that song, Smooth. Don't you love Carlos Santana on the guitar? Yeah. He's a good, nice good guitarist. Good stuff. You know, he, I think he still lives here. He had a house here for a long time. Probably has a house in a bunch of places. He does. Well, <laughs> San Francisco, of course, you know. So part of that whole San Francisco sound. Mm-hmm. This hour of music brought to us by the Queen Calm Honor Center, and we've got Dave Mason here in studio. Who is who's taking the month off, but then heading out on a blue cruise, and then you're going to be on tour with Gretchen. I'll be back out till till April. Have some more dates with myself and Steve Cropper. Oh, do you? Yeah, and, oh, fun. and of course Gretchen's part of my ba- band now. Mm-hmm. So 
Yeah, we'll be back out there. Well, this great CD that you have out, it's interesting because um, it, it's still, no matter what people realize, that it's still hard to get music out there, you know. Um, and you're doing it yourself now, or is this through uh, one of your record labels? This? No, I, I, record label? I haven't had a record label <laughs> in... <laughs> what are, who does? 15, 20 years. <laughs> I think pointless. there's, what, three companies or four companies yeah, that's that are... about it. Um, this is for real. So, it, how do you distribute um, when you do a great release like this? It deserves well, distribution. Well, I come on. I <laughs> this is one aspect of it. At this point, is you know, um, you know, the problem with most, the biggest problem is not the record labels. To be honest with you, okay. Mm -hmm. The biggest problem is, and I, I hate to say this, and uh, uh, not here, but basically, radio is the I biggest agree. problem. I agree. Okay, not. In a format like this, because you're still doing like FM use. Uh, great what, FM. I started back there, great FM. Exactly. Yeah. So, th which is still terrestrial radio, as much as everybody goes on about the internet, terrestrial radio is huge yeah. and, and very important. But there's nothing going on. There, there are no DJs anymore. There's nobody going, hey, here's, you know, you've got classic rock radio, okay? Mm -hmm. Which you would think would say, Hey, that was We Just Disagree by Dave Mason. Check out the latest from him. You'd think they'd be, but there's nowhere left for it or to tell you. And, and then there's no, and a lot of ones don't even tell you who you're hearing. And then, for instance, it's like, well, if you, this is the latest thing from Dave Mason. If you want to get a copy of mm -hmm. this, go to DaveMasonMusic.com where you can download the song or you can buy the CD. Well, or you can corporate. get it at the concerts. I remember when it got corporate. I was in it when all of a sudden the big corporations took over and all of a sudden you were only allowed to play one track. All of a sudden you weren't even allowed to do anything because it was all voice tracked by right, someone exactly. in another state yeah, that was yeah. sending it out to hundreds and hundreds of radio stations. Right. And people, you know, it was scary, Dave. A lot of people didn't know the difference. A uh, lot of people did not know. I believe, I've, of course they don't. They don't know the difference. And all of a sudden they didn't realize they were only hearing one song of an album that had brilliant 22 songs or 20 songs. Now people put out an EP that has six songs or they just give you one download. And, and there used to be themes and reasons for songs. Or, mm, or, and now it's just I, like, you know. It's, we're, 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 we're wallpaper. <laughs> We're backing for selling things. Oh, don't get me depressed. You know, coming, coming just... up. We've, okay, we've got one of the great songs. Don't you kind of wish you'd written Imagine? John Lennon, of oh, course, yeah. with this course song. Of course they do. Great song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's The Doors, 5 to 1, and The Who Love, Rain or Me. You the Who. Got, who's still any, doing it, right? Who's still doing what? Still doing great music, The Who. Still doing great music. Oh, I am. Well, you are too. <laughs> I thought you are. I am. We did some great stuff at Mix Place last night. Oh, did you? What'd you do? I didn't know about that. I got uh, went down there and uh, got up and sang a few songs with Gretchen and oh, fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mick is amazing. He's doing it for the love too. Oh yeah. He is. I mean, you know, he doesn't have to go do, but he really and he just did that big tour. That was a well. Big that isn't tour. over. He's oh, is he still on the road with that? Oh tour? yeah. Isn't oh. This good? That ends, I think. Um, in Sept uh, September of this year. Yeah, yeah, that's then. a lot of work. Now, do you don't you could you or would you ever do a big tour like that? I mean, there's so much more sure. stadium. I don't yeah. want to go. You don't mind doing stadiums? It's gonna play till I drop. <laughs> don't miss the last show, okay? <laughs> what do you What do you like about playing live? Um, ugh, there's a number of elements. I mean, I you know, basically. What I'm doing is I'm uh, mostly is I'm mostly selling I'm mostly selling memories. Yes, indeed. See, I'm at this point, because I've been doing this for a long time, so songs are people have certain periods of their fell in love, or then this happened, or that was happening, and the song gets associated with that. So there's memories involved in it, um, and I love being able to. And for an hour and a half, two hours, whatever it is, is. Um, you take people uh, just out of the daily BS of life, whatever, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and also I get to, and it's, and it's a place where everybody's in the moment. Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, there's people there with that damn Phone. iPhone. Yeah, trying like, to <laughs> can't you just sit and watch this, for Christ's sake? They should almost so, make it illegal. Uh, they should be confiscated <laughs> at agree. the door. I agree. Um, 
so that's that's what's great, and it's um, kind of a communion of ways. I mean, it's a communion of energy. People, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, right, you're, and you and 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 I can still do it. Yeah, and I'm and you're good, and I'm 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 not the best. I'm not no, the but worst. Your voice but, is but I'm really better. good at being Dave Mason. If you pick up for real, Dave Mason with Steve Cropper and Gretchen Rhodes. Yes, and Alto Reed on a song or two, right? Alto's yeah. on a song. Or two uh, from the Silver Bullet Band, and and you'll hear how good Dave's voice sounds. I mean, and you, there's the other guys on better. there singing too. Uh, yeah. My keyboard player, one of the great. Tony sings "Knock on Wood," and uh, um, John uh, Sambatero. John Sambatero, yeah. actually Johnny um, Sambatero and Gretchen do a great version of. Uh, um, uh, on the, um, the Blind Faith song. I can't find my way can't home. Can't find my way home. Exactly. Yeah, they do a great version of that. Well, at this hour of music brought to us by our friends at the Queen Ka'ahumonu Center. And coming up here, we got John Mellencamp, Jack and Diane, and also the Wallflowers with One Headlight and More on the Magic Morning Buzz. As Jimmy, 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 all along the watchtower. And I'm here with Dave Mason, and I yes. didn't know you played on that. Yes. How did that happen? With Hendrix? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I did. Uh, uh, well, I, but actually, I was, there was, I got to know him and hung out. We kind of did some th things, and I, we were all worked in the same studio in Olympic, uh, same engineer, um, Eddie Kramer. Um, so there was a lot, people would intermingle. It's very easy to access other people. In England, because that was the only place everybody would graduate to was one city, London. That's where the studios were. So, uh, and he was a fan of traffics, and 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 so I eventually I got to um, I was going to take Noel Redding's place on bass. Really? Actually, because Jimmy <laughs> plays pretty much he's playing on every track, playing bass on pretty much every track on Electric Ladyland. I didn't know you played bass. I I played a little bit in mm -hmm. traffic, but otherwise I haven't played it in years. I mean, I can if I sit down and think about it. But um, but the point being is that um, Jim and I went to uh, um, a friend of his, a girlfriend of his, was having a little, some people over one afternoon. It was a week, I don't know whether it was a weekend or what, in London, because she had an advanced copy of John Wesley Harding. Oh, and of yeah. course, we want to hear what um, Bob Dylan uh, is doing. Well, I think Dylan's probably one of the greatest yep. uh, of all of them, frankly. I mean, as a writer and everything. But um, So, yeah, we want to hear that. We'll all go over there, and so we're listening, and we're I guess something caught his ear on all along the Watchtower. So he and I and Mitch Mitchell, uh, I, I, I can't remember if it was a day or a couple of days later, uh, we were in Olympic Studios laying down the basic track for for uh, all along the watchtower with me playing the uh, the acoustic the, tw the acoustic 12 string on here mm. and Jimmy we were sitting facing each other at a microphone double sided microphone and Mitch and it's just the three of us it was that's how the track was laid down it's that's got to have been amazing and then I sang on crosstown traffic too and there was some other stuff that I did where I played bass and and sitar because I was fooling around that, that's a hard, <coughs> with hard, sitar at hard the time. Instrument to play. George Harrison had given me a sitar to kind of get started on. Um, yeah, it's, I've been. <laughs> I crop up on a few things. It's, I don't really think about it until people bring it and up. Now you're with playing with Steve Cropper. So there you go. The Steve, crop, exactly. crop carries on. <laughs> Just think of the think of the seeds planted. Yes. One of the great moments and uh, be able to be that in tune with Jimmy to be able to play that great song. Oh, yeah. Which, I mean, so. he's... there. There's a lot of great, 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 great guitar players out there. Yeah. But there are no more Jimmy Hendrixes. <laughs> yes, amen on the that. The guy was so innovative. So uh, true. Um, he was brilliant. Amazing. Uh, brilliant. Coming up, we've got some heart on the Magic Morning Buzz. Well, I'm so happy to be here in the studio with Dave Mason, who is truly a music lover. Um, and has a passion for playing and writing. Um, is it is it more, you're doing so many live shows, is it harder to write now, or do you even try to write when you're doing this intensive <laughs> other work? Well, it, 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 <laughs> um, 
because of what's happened, i.e., with records mm -hmm. and the lack thereof, I really don't spend the right that much at all. Because no it's people want to hear something, oh, that's a pre made hit. And they well, want to relate that it, it's easier. Well, to they don't, but there's, going back to what we talked about with radio, there's nowhere to expose it. You're right. You're right, yeah. And they try to at the Grammys. I get so frustrated, and I'm going to get in trouble because I'm a Grammy voting member and everything. <laughs> so am I. But that's okay. And, and I didn't go this year because, I mean, truthfully, it, oh, I don't even want to say that. I'm going to get in trouble. I won't go there. <laughs> I'm not. I'm going to people report. They actually have spies that work for them. Yeah, I'm Honest sure. Whatever. But but no, I. It, you're right. The, the music has to have a door and opening, and I do totally 100% agree with you that radio is a venue, and it has, I think, in my mind, a responsibility. Well, it, it, uh, uh, let's put it this way. If, if, we, if you took all the music away, what are they left with? Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing. Commercials. I mean, that's, you, <laughs> you know, and part of that whole thing is yeah. why I think talk radio got so big. Well, you might be it's right. Because in the old, when there was a DJ and somebody there, yeah. there was a, you know, there was somebody Some energy for the listener to react with. Right. <laughs> It's, you know, nothing. You, and talk radio has gotten big, and it's one of the few yep. venues where you can actually say things extemporaneously. A lot of these other radio stations, you only aren't even allowed to say anything, really, just <laughs> notes. Re no, literally, you've got to write down what's recorded, and you can't say anything other than that, you know. Sure. And it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. I think They think that's what people want. They think that you go for the lowest common denominator. Uh, I do not that's agree with that. Very, that's like, I do not no, agree with that. Absolutely not. <laughs> But no, I, I, I think you're a very wise man, and I really appreciate you sharing your wisdom. Um, we're going to try to get inspiring. <laughs> well, it does okay. inspire people to write coming up, <laughs> coming up the cars and the dangerous type on the Magic Morning Buzz. Music from Bon Jovi there, You Give Love a Bad Name, and also one of the great groups, the band, with oh, yeah. the weight. Um, and this hour music brought to us by Island Feet. I've got Dave Mason hanging out, and we're talking story, and I'm... You know, you knew the band. The band we said, we're talking how great Dylan was, and Dylan recognized the um, the roots. Now it's called Americana, I think. Uh, it is. You know how Americana has become like what, rock and roll. It's like everybody's going to put a tag on something to identify it. It's like, uh, yeah. uh, it was. It would be called Americana or Americana roots now. But it, the band was one of the all time greats. Well, all pretty much. Let's put it this way: is rock and roll, gospel, blues. Jazz, um, pretty much everything but 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 bluegrass is all American contemporary music. You're right. It all started here. I said, Brits, all we did was just copy the American music. But you had more respect for it than we did. And well, it took we some had, of you doing what you did, and that's why Jimmy went to London, right? Well, also we, you know, because we were talking about radio and the... The other aspect of radio is that, see, we didn't have segregated radio. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I didn't think of that. And then there was Radio Caroline. There was Radio Did Caroline, radio? radio Luxembourg. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you were a kid, you made yourself a little crystal radio set and mm -hmm. could pick up Radio Luxembourg too, huh? <laughs> and all that stuff. But we didn't have that segregated radio, which people forget. I did. Was here. You know, the black artists wouldn't be played on a white station. You're right. And vice versa. So all that great... You know, the Eric Clapton's of the world and all that stuff, if it wasn't for the great American blues artists, they wouldn't exist. Mm -hmm. No, you're absolutely correct. When you moved At to, all. So that's you, you moved to America in about 1970? I came, moved here in 19... Uh, I moved here permanently in 1969. Right at the turning point there. Right, yeah. That there were was still a hippies running around on Sunset Boulevard. I remember that. I lived <laughs> I lived about three blocks above Sunset Boulevard on Sunset and Doheny up in the hills. There. Oh, you're right there. Oh, oh yeah. God, you were in the thick of it. Oh, no, I was in the thick of right it. Right up there, yeah. Whiskey A Go Go. And, and our station, K West, which John and I had in, um, that was in Los Angeles, was in the glass elevator building about one block from Tower Music. And when Tower Music died, Oh my God! You know that was a sign, right? Right there when the Tower Music Tower finally records, closed. Right Tower there. Records, yeah. yeah. Tower uh, Records yeah. closed. But I um, mean, no, there was a lot of. We used to have a lot of great people like you and others coming in all the time. You know, all the time. It was a treat. In fact, <laughs> Mick Fleetwood and I interviewed him there years and years and years ago. Yeah, Did you ever yeah. play at the Whiskey? Yeah. 
Oh, you did? Yeah. I didn't know that. What? That and was the a troubadour great venue. And the... Oh, I love the troubadour. I saw Dr. John and the Neville Brothers play at the troubadour back then. And I saw James Taylor mm-hmm. in one of his... Th- oh, yeah. There was some great moments at the troubadour. Yeah, it was a great... Actually, one of the best ones, or probably, I didn't go to all of them, but one great one was, um, was you know, because Doug... Would, Doug, yeah. Doug would pr- bring acts over yeah. that were just getting started. Yep. But part of his thing was, I'll put you in here, but you guarantee me two more performances. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. So ah. acts would come in and you know do their little thing to get in. And they were at the beginning of their career. And then you know, a year later or so, they'd be bigger than sliced bread. And they, they, would and be they still got to come back to the Troubadour. But one of the shows Brilliant. that was great was Elton John. Oh, I didn't see Just that. Just by himself wow. with that um, great percussion player that, that he had, the English guy. Just incredible. Just the two of them. Wow. And that was it. And that was the show. It was. Wow. He was I mean, Alton is, 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 forget all the flamboyance and all yes. of it. You take all that away, man. He's, he's pretty he's, awesome. He is. He is. That's uh, Donovan, hurdy gurdy man. Donovan. And the Standells. We share the Very same water. birth date. You and Donovan. Yeah. Um, this hour of music brought to us by Island Beat and as local owner operators. I appreciate you guys doing your business there on Jerry Road at 395 Jerry Road. Donovan um, really actually did beautiful lyrics. He was this the a good poet. he was a he was a troubadour, right? I oh, mean, yeah. he really had embodied that spirit of someone that you could see in the ancient days, really doing it for the <laughs> yeah. queen, right? I mean, wasn't that his trip? <laughs> well, yeah, he's got you know, the 60s and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Renaissance he, fairs and all that. Yeah, and, uh, but he yeah. wrote good words. Oh, yeah, yeah, he yeah. Did, yeah. He he's a good some, poet. And had a good voice. Yep. You're distinct. I don't know what he's doing now at all. I have no idea uh, what he's doing. Uh, I don't know. I don't you know, know what's scary? My daughter went to high school with him at Hollywood High. That's how scary oh, it gets. Oh, really? That's uh, now we get okay. <laughs> And he's like, oh, no. Um, so we want to inspire people a little bit because um, it's really important whether or not you get big on the radio or, or sell a lot of records is to still do your music, right? Well, I just think, well, I, I, if, if we're talking about that, uh, I mean, not in particular, let's not even just, make it about music it's a just whatever if you're doing something in your life whatever it is if you you, you need some you need, it needs a passion you have to have a passion for it and you have to have the patience to see it through a lot of people have great ideas they just don't want to do what it takes to bring it to reality which you're is so right. which is work effort and a lot of you know stumbling blocks and but so I think it's past instant gratification. It's really having a passion, and at some point, turning that song into a letting it have its own life. Well, you yeah, turning the song into letting it speak to you as well. well. Well, yeah, that, and then once it's out there, it's sort of it's everybody's. Everybody has their, you know, everybody has their own interpretation on what that song is, you know. But um, but yeah, if it's just a, if it, if it's music and that's your passion, um, I, you know. You go for it. Um, if you're looking, <laughs> if you're if you're doing it to make a living and make a career, I think you know I <laughs> I'd have some degree in some other th- something else at the same well, time. We just, all have our just to cover, job. but right. um, don't quit your day job. You don't quit your day job just yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Coming up, we've got music from Dave Mason and Gretchen Rhodes. A great song from. For Real, the brand new CD, and this one's Only You Know and I Know. A great, great song, and done so well on this new CD. And this was actually done live to a small audience in a studio in, was it North Carolina? Or it was Friends, created? yes, it was, uh, it's actually, uh, the, he built, he owns a big 300-acre parcel of <laughs> land up there in Northern Carolina. He, he built a, uh, recreated a whole western town, and one of it, of course, is a, is a dance hall saloon. And that's where we did this, at a pr- uh, private event there for some people. Really well so, done. Um, really yeah. well done, Dave. Here. Only You Know Nine. That was a big hit for Delaney and Bonnie. That's right. Was that with Derek and the Dominoes? No, no, oh, Delaney no, and Bonnie. Bonnie af- before or after the Derek and the Dominoes? Oh, that's, I knew all those people before Derek before. and the Dominoes. Yeah. I played with Delaney and Bonnie. And then they, they were had, great. She had a great voice. And they were a great band. Yeah, absolutely. And then Eric stole them all and Derek and the Dominoes. <laughs> Oh, is that what happened? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Coming up, great music. 
That's Jackson Brown. You love the thunder and the Beatles. Hello, goodbye. Yeah, no, I was on K-Rock, and I got a call from Howard Burke, Jackson's manager at the time. And he said, we need a 55 Chevy for the cover of our album. Will you play a bunch of songs that have to do with 55 Chevys and ask someone if they've got one we can use for our cover? So I had, you know, it's amazing how many songs there are about Chevys. Um, you know, I mean, Tequila Sunrise or, no, Freeway Tracks and da-dum. Um, I'm driving home. Um, driving at Draco down the Eagle song. Oh, okay. And my 55 Chevy, and there's a bunch of others. Anyway, we got a 55 Chevy for the album cover, which was the days where you could really have that interaction, which I love. Yeah, right? yeah. But Jackson Brown's another good songwriter. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Very good songwriter. Um, and I've had a chance to interview him over the years, and um, he comes to Maui sometimes. And it's one thing doing a band, and he can do it acoustically, too. Yep. Have you ever done an acoustic unplugged? You have never done that? Uh, well, I, I might have been... <laughs> one of the original artists to start doing Unplugged back in the 70s. They never did ever ask me to do the Unplugged series on MTV ever once, but I started doing it in the 70s, just myself and uh, um, a great guitar player that was in my band for 18 years, um, Jim Krieger, who uh, also wrote We Just Disagree. Right. Uh, and we were, we were, I went out for two, couple, two or three years just doing acoustic, but do, have I done it since, I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, I find it boring <laughs> well, be that's because why I'm a guitar, I, 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 I really started as a guitar player. That's uh -huh. what I wanted. So if I can't, you know, I, I like singing the songs, but if I can't just step out for a minute and. You know, play a solo or do something. I just bore. I get bored. It's boring for uh -huh. me. Just, <laughs> well, it's for more intimate. Yes. Kind of. I mean, Beck just played at McCabe's. Yes. Um, to raise money. I used to have a music instrument store down the road from them, but um, McCabe's has been doing it forever, and 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 it's kind of cool because when you're doing it like that, you know, you're kind of exposed doing it, right? There's no extra. No. Stuff. So you got to just be out there with your instrument and no. stuff. But but the band does let you do a new energy with the whole great people you have. When you're playing with Steve Cropper, my God, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you're taking it to, there's that energy and synergy that takes you both to a different level, right? Yes. Magic happens. Yep. Yeah. And it did on this um, for real. It did. It came out really well. Yeah, very really well. Really well. Yeah. And I got to sing some things that I would never. Which ones? <laughs> sung in my life. Well, like the Midnight Hour. That's a great song. Um, I'm gonna wait till midnight. Yeah, yeah. so to, you know that was a kick for me to be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I absolutely get it. And be a, just a side man too, while everybody else was playing or mm -hmm. singing. Um, and soon do shake, rattle, and roll, which is came out. That's a lot of fun. I mean, that's rock and roll to me. Yeah. Shake, rattle, and roll. Absolutely. 1950. Shake, Rattle, and Roll first came out in 1954. Wow. Wow. That was kind of rockabilly, though, wasn't it? At that that's time? what was rock and roll. That's, that's, rock and roll a, that's what I call, you know, Eddie Cochran yeah. rock and roll. Yeah. Little Richard's rock and roll. Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry, for sure. Rock and roll. Um, so that's what I think of when I think of rock and roll. Yep. And? Buddy Holly. Yep. Oh, you probably knew this guy. Yeah. And I have to say, I still love the early Rod Stewart. Got Rod Stewart, and I love the song he did, Maggie May. Rod Stewart, Rod Stewart, yeah, I, I sort of, I'm not a huge fan, I have to admit. I saw him, we used to have these shows back, I uh, was 16, 17. They'd be all-nighters, all-night shows. In little clubs? Well, this is going to wind up uh, my show. It's really been a treat. I, I, you know, I have to say, Dave, you, you know, you're a very generous, nice person, and most musicians won't come in and do this kind of thing. You're on vacation, and I so appreciate you taking the time to come in and talk story and, and be real, oh, well, that, you know? I, well, you make it easy. It's fun. And I'm busy doing nothing anyway. So. <laughs> well, nothing's good. What do you like to do on your time off when you come to Maui? Nothing. You just like literally just sit and There's watch the ocean? Busy or? doing nothing, working the whole day through. Oh, trying to find lots of things not to do. Isn't it nice that you Is he can going enjoy nowhere? That? Isn't it just a crime? I'd like to be unhappy, but I never do have the time. What's that from? <laughs> Pinocchio. <laughs> oh my God! I never. I thought that was some song you wrote. No, it's from <laughs> Pinocchio. <laughs> the I, the I, original I, Walt Disney Pinocchio. I did not remember that one. 
I mean, I remember Jiminy, Jiminy Jimmy Cricket. Cricket yeah. yeah, yeah, when sure. you wish upon a star, of course. And, of yeah. course, I, now they're bringing Dumbo back, right? Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> so it's like, who knows? Uh, Maybe Pinocchio will come Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that are those clothes in the closet become fashionable again at some point. You and know then maybe <laughs> you'll do a Broadway show like Bruce and Carol King. Can you believe it? they're doing? They're doing, no, yeah, they're yeah. doing this Broadway, right? Okay. Yeah. And who else? Yeah, there's another one. There's like three big people out there doing have Broadway shows now. Oh so what gosh, are you, gonna I, do? you know, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm on an island in the middle of the Pacific. We have a little theater <laughs> up the street here. See, the, you know, theater. You can. I'm sure we can arrange to have you. Have a little one-man show up there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Tell the stories. Let's let you talk. <laughs> Coming up, we've got music from Nazareth, Kathy Collins, and then Jack, Jocular Jack, and Alice, Alice Cooper. I'll be back tomorrow morning on the Magic Morning Buzz. Thanks for listening.